Thank you. I'm very uh, excited, uh, actually nervous to be here. Uh, I will tell you about uh, my work on expanders. Uh, so what is uh, an expander? Here is, a, is an expander. It's a graph. It has, it has very remarkable properties. Uh, you can communicate very, very cheaply, very fast from every node to every node. You have high mixing rate, which means that if you put a random walker on this graph, it gets lost very quick. It's very hard to separate this graph into disconnected components. You have to cut through a lot of edges. So it's a very remarkable graph, but uh, somehow it's, it's disappointing, right? We want something <laughs> better than this. So what really Expander is, is a graph with the same properties, but that we can uh, uh, buy cheap, more cheaply. So we, need, we want less edges. We want the same properties, but using a lower amount of edges. Uh, so here is a more formal uh, definition. So let's uh, take for simplicity a k-regular graph on n vertices. So the Chigger constant, uh, this is one of several pretty equivalent def definition, is the minimum of, uh, of the number of edges going between a cut of the graph. So I look at the subset and its complement. I want to minimize the number of edges between them and also uh, normalize by the size of the sets. So this constant is small when the graph looks like this, when it has bottlenecks. Here I have a cut into very large, into half and half of the graph with very few edges between. So this is a small Chigger constant. This is a high Chigger constant. I, this is the best I can do in this graph. So this graph looks very nice, but this is what we want. We want graphs that look like this because they have the good uh, properties we've seen in, in the complete graph. And this, uh, this, the Chigger constant is very useful, but hard to analyze directly. And here comes the magic that, uh, of spectral expansion. So you have, we have uh, an operator and a graph uh, on the space of functions on the graph vertices, uh, the Laplacian, which gives for a vertex the, uh, its value times k minus the sum of the values on neighbors. And the constant functions are in the kernel of this uh, operator. That's trivial because the value is constant. And the non-trivial spectrum is everything else. So we look at the uh, functions at, at the orthogonal, orthogonal complement to the constant, which are the function which sum to 0. And we call the minimal eigenvalue there the spectral gap of the graph. So the minimal, minimal eigenvalue of the Laplacian on the function which sum to 0. And first of all, note that the spectral gap vanishes at 0 exactly when the graph is disconnected, because the really, the kernel here is not only the constant function, but also the locally constant functions, so functions which give the same value to neighbors. It's easy to see that this is that they are there, but also this is the entire kernel. And you have a locally constant function which sum to zero exactly if the graph is disconnected. So if lambda equals zero means that the graph is disconnected, maybe lambda very big, than very large lambda means that the graph is very connected, which is what we want. We want a very connected graph. And here is a an an positive answer by uh, Tane Doju Kalon Milman in 84-85. Uh, you really can uh, uh, relate the spectral gap of the graph to the Chigger constant from both sides. Here you have some uh, dependency on the degree. But for carry regular graph, it means that you have uh, the Chigger constant bounded away from 0 exactly when the spectral gap is. Uh, so a little prehistory, this begins with geometry. You have a similar definition of the Chigger constant of a manifold. Just want to show the picture. And earlier works give a similar uh, inequality for the uh, non -trivial, first non-trivial eigenvalue of the Laplace Beltrami operator on the manifold. So this is somehow the, the, um, the prestigious setting we wish to uh, imitate in the discrete setting. So we have the same uh, for manifold with, with globally bounded curvature. So this is history. Now we come to a modern time. So everything is known on manifolds and graphs. So we go to uh, new realms. So simplicial complexes, most of you probably uh, know what it is. Uh, uh, it's a collection of subsets of the set of vertices. They have uh, lots of names. And here's a picture. And the only assumption is that the subset of a cell is a cell. If you don't have this assumption, then you are talking about hypergraphs, I think, usually. <coughs> we want this assumption. So what is an expansion in, in complexes? What is a, in, in simplicial complex, what is a high-dimensional expander? So now there are lots of definition, and it's not 
totally clear what uh, the relation between them. So first there is a spectral definition, a spectral uh, Laplacian, uh, Laplacian, which uh, starts with work of uh, Benno Ekman from the 40s and is most known, I think, for, for from uh, famous work of, of Garland. And there is a, a definition of expansion which goes, which is uh, very, f I think, active now in computer science, which I will not talk about due to these people and a very interesting and, and hard one due to Gromov, which has to do with uh, a mapping of complexes into Euclidean spaces. What I will talk now about is the following simple generalization of the Chigger constant. I will um, par par partition my vertices into uh, d plus one. This is the dimension of the complex. I will par partition the vertices into d plus one sets and count the number of simplices which have one vertex in each set. So here, is a picture, this is what we had before. I counted the edges along a partition. Now I have a partition into three sets of a triangle complex and I count the uh, triangles with one, uh, one vertex in each uh, of, the, of the set. And I want to understand uh, this with relate to other expansion properties. Other uh, interesting notion of expan expansion is pseudo-randomness, which means uh, somehow understanding this not only for partitions, but for any sets of vertices, not necessarily ones which cover the entire graph. And another one is, is a generalization of notions of random walk. So maybe I'll say something about this later. So uh, to understand first the spectral theory of complexes, this is uh, what uh, is called J-form, J-chain, J-cochain. It functions on the oriented uh, cells of the complex, which are anti-symmetric with respect to flip or orientation. So if I give to uh, some edge three, I have to give the opposite edge minus three. For, so for example, omega one is what uh, people think about as, as currents or flows. It describes a flow along the edges. And omega zero just functions because it, there are no orientation to vertices. And somehow it's useful to also look at functions on the empty cell, which is like constant, just the value there. And there is a, a differential map which uh, goes up in dimension, which uh, sum along the boundary. So for a function on the vertices, its differential is the, func is the form which gives to an edge the difference between the endpoints. And similarly, for a triangle, for function on the edges, the differential sum over the boundary of a triangle. And this is a, a, a chain complex. So applying twice the differential is zero, and the uh, uh, homology is the real simplicial cohomology uh, of the complex, and this is very old. It goes back to 95, not the 95 that you remember, the one before that. The innovation of Econ from the 40s was very simple, but but very powerful. It, it was uh, looking at the, uh, these spaces, the inner product spaces. Just take the most simple uh, inner product you can think of, and look at the uh, adjoint function and uh, compose the, the differential and it's a joint uh, co-differential. And th this is the Laplacian. So it's an, a not hard exercise. In everyone in computer science or in combinatorics did this once to see that this is exactly the graph Laplacian. And so why not call this Laplacian in higher dimension? And as in graphs, we had the constant, which were the trivial um, uh, zero. So where did the constant came from? They're actually the image of the constant from dimension minus one. So here as well, because it's a, it's a chain complex, everything which comes from dimension d minus two, its differential will vanish when I, uh, when I apply this differential. So this is the trivial kernel of the Laplacian, and everything outside of it is the non-trivial uh, spectrum. So the spectral gap is the minimal eigenvalue in the orthogonal complement of the image, and this, by the fundamental theorem of linear algebra, is the kernel of the a joint map, which are called cycles. This is also very old. So cycles um, are the, the kernel of the downgoing map. For example, zero cycles of function which sum to zero and one cycles also have a nice interpretation. These are Kirchhoff forms, one in which the inflow uh, equals the outflow in every vertex. So this is the uh, spectrum. This is the spectral gap of a complex. And again, and this is due to Ekman, it va it's vanishes exactly if the d minus one real homology is non-trivial. So this is this is part of a more uh, general discrete Hodge decomposition, which is uh, 
exactly what you have in Riemannian settings, except that you don't need manifolds. It works for any complex. So if the homology vanishes, so if the spectral gap vanishes when the homology is non-trivial, we want to say again that if the, if the spectral gap is large, then somehow the homology should be very trivial. And we want to ask if this implies somehow expansion. So uh, here is the spectral gap, and here is our Chigger uh, constant. We, in graph, we had something of this form. Lambda was bounded from above and below. We, if we try to look for something like this, we're going to get disappointed. So here is an, uh, a counterexample. This is a minimal triangulation of the Mebius strip. It has, it because of what I said earlier, it, it's the Mebius strip is uh, homotopic to the circle. It has non-trivial first homology, which means that the spectral gap is zero. But if you go and, and compute the Chigger constant, it's not zero. So you won't have anything of this form. But then uh, you go and, and compute examples. So here are all the, uh, complex, the triangle complexes on five vertices, and you see that here is our um, misbehaving Mebius band. But somehow it looks nicely. You put more uh, vertices, and, and it seems that there is, some, there is something here. So we don't uh, know to explain this completely. We have one direction. So first of all, we do have the lambda smaller than 8, the easy part of the Chigger inequality, the uh, horizontal line in the middle. Everything is above it, but we don't know how to bound from above. But we do have something stronger than this. We do know that if the spectrum is not only bounded from below, but also from above, then we have pseudo-randomness. So for any uh, disjoint set of vertices, not uh, necessarily a partition, we can uh, estimate pretty, we can give a good estimate on the number of uh, D cells with one vertex in each coordinate. This, uh, this is the generalization of another a famous theorem from Graf, this, this is the expander mixing lemma of uh, several people here, I think, understood it independently in the late 80s. So this is uh, a little about uh, Chigger and uh, so the randomness. Now I want to talk a little about Ramanujan complexes. So here's another famous theorem of Alon Bopana, though you, I think you, you, it doesn't appear in any paper written officially by Alon or Bopana. It goes by this name. It says that if you have an infinite family of k regular graphs, then eventually the spectral gap will drop to k minus 2 root of k minus 1, or even lower than that. You can't stay larger than that inf infinitely many times. So it gives you a bound on how good spectral expansion you can expect. And Ramanujan graphs are, bound, are graphs which achieve this bound. So it's and the famous construction of, of Lubotsky, Filak, Pilsen, and Sarnak, and Margulis, and then Morgenstern uh, construct these graphs using the Ramanujan conjecture, the, hence the name. Uh, for uh, k, which are prime powers plus 1, as a quotient of the Bruhatitz building, Bruhatitz tree associated with PGL2 over a non uh, Archimedean local field. So I won't go into the details, but basically uh, the quotient by arithmetic lattices are Ramanujan. This is the main uh, theorem here, and it relies on very deep and uh, prestigious uh, work in uh, representation theory and number theory. And this work in representation theory was uh, generalized in 2003 to PGLD by, by Lafol, and this uh, prompted several people to start looking at the higher dimensional uh, buildings and their uh, quotient by arithmetic classes and call them Ramanujan complexes. So there are now several works about them, but I think that uh, no one really uh, studied the, them from the combinatorial point of view, and this is what we try to do now. We have very little to say, so this is a joint work with uh, Konstantin Golubev. Uh, we just took triangle, Ramanujan triangle complexes and compute the spectrum of the, the, uh, the one-dimensional Laplacian. So we found out that we have most of the no we have the zero, the trivial spectrum. Then most of the, the non-trivial spectrum is exactly where we want it to be in a, um, in a small strip around q plus one, which is the degree of uh, edges. But also there is a residual residual spectrum, a bad spectrum, which is around two q plus one, and, and uh, it ruins wh what we are trying to do. So now we're in the process of understanding how to avoid this function, where do they come from. So it seems this is a, an interesting story in the middle. I hope it will turn out to be interesting in the end. 
I have a mirror tattoo? Can I take two more minutes or? One. <laughs> Good. So, uh, oh, okay, I won't. I won't. So, uh, Alon Bopana really comes from a theorem of Kessen, which is uh, the computation I of. Think it's <laughs> okay. <laughs> because of L2. You saw L2, so you became interesting. <laughs> Um, so the, the spectrum of the L2 functions on the K regular tree uh, were computed, this was computed by Kesten, and then several people understood that really if you have a sequence of graph which converges to a graph in some very natural sense, then you have this alon bopana uh, theorem, that the spectral gap are bounded by the limit, by the spectral gap of the limit. And, okay, this is the definition, never mind. And we wanted also to understand what happens in higher dimensions. So let's, let's, if we take a sequence of complexes, let it uh, converge to a complex, then uh, the situation is more complicated. So if, for example, the limit one has non-zero spectral gap, or if zero is in the non-trivial spectrum, but it's not isolate, isolated, or if the skeleton, the, the co-dimension one skeleton of the complexes form a family of expanders, we have a lot of, uh, condition which ensures that uh, Alon Bopana holds, but it doesn't hold in general. So we, ha we do have a counterexample. We take triangles and add triangles and add triangles and converge to this nice tessellation of the hyperbolic plane, and it, it violates the Alon Bopana. So things become more interesting in higher dimension. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much. Oh, wait. Wait, wait, wait. Okay. <laughs>